Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be going through some Photoshop tips and tricks that I use on a daily basis. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Alright, so starting off we have this picture of a boat in a lake. However, you can see that it's a 16 by 9 ratio and I'm wanting the image to be portrait. So what I'm going to do over here is click this layer over here, right click and make sure the layer is rasterized. Once the layer is rasterized, we can edit it without any issue. We're going to head over over here to the rectangular, rectangular tool, click this, and we're going to select this top segment of the image that we wanted to fill in. And it's using a tool, something called um, Content Awareful, where um, Adobe uses AI to basically fill in the gaps. So we're going to right click in this area and click Content Awareful. And AI will try its best off the bat to try and create something. Um, this is pretty good, however, there's a bit of miscoloring in the sky. So you can um, fiddle around with the settings to what works for you. I'm going to just try and put the rotation adaptation to low and see if this makes a difference. It might make this, this sky go on a bit further, which it has done. I'm happy with that, so we're going to click apply and OK. So you can see here, we've actually extended the sky further than the original image. Now, if we did the same technique on the water, it will look a bit weird and uniformed and it wouldn't look that realistic. So we'll use a different tool and we'll click S on our keyboard to bring up the stamp tool. And we're going to hold Option and click somewhere in the water. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're selected on the original image, not on the content aware image. And then we're just going to go to paint over just like so. And the more you do it, the more um, space you have to basically pull uh, the image from. So we're going to do this. It will look a bit strange to start off with. You need to go back into Command Z to go back. So we're just going to start off by creating um, the basic basic colouring. If you hold Option and Control on your keyboard and move your mouse left and right, you can actually change the size of your brush. I'm going to go a bit smaller to start off with actually and just get in these details as you can see over here. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into the next tip. For the next tip, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a custom colour for anything. If it's a car, an object, a game character, a person, anything you would like, this is one way out of many ways you could change the colour. So the first thing we're going to do is unlock the layer on the right hand side. And we're going to go up to the top menu and click select and colour range. We're going to select the blue on the car. And you see this white bit in the preview is actually what it's going to be selecting. As you see here, quite on low fuzziness, you can see it doesn't select that much blue. So we're going to turn this all the way up to the top and you can see it selects every bit of blue in the image. As you can see here, it's done just that. So I'm going to create a new layer by clicking the little add button down here. And I'm going to click B for my brush. And make sure it's a pretty big size. I'm going to pick red just like so. And then I'm going to just brush over the car, as you can see, like this and then click command D to remove that selection. So you see here the car looks pretty red and it's not that too realistic, you can still see some of the blue here and it looks a bit messy. So what we are going to do is go head over to the uh, layers panel and we're going to go and experiment in some different blending modes. So we're going to click normal and you can go down, this will be a bit of trial and error just seeing which ones work because depending on your textures and your image and your colours, some will work and some won't. So we're going to go down um, this will make it pink if we choose this one, but it's not really what I'm going for. Um, so I think I'm going to go for um, linear light. And this creates a nice red effect. And you can toggle the visibility of the layer in the right hand side. So you can see before and after, it's changed the colour of the car. And it doesn't look too blue on the little details of the reflections either. So yeah, that's one way you can change a colour of an object or anything you would like in Photoshop.
The next one is one of my favourites. As you can see here, I created this esports graphic a couple of months ago. However, I, when I was creating this, I realised I really liked the design. However, the welcome Richie text wasn't that visible with the black and um, a lot going on in the background. So I wanted to figure out a way to basically differentiate the background for the text, but without adding a drop shadow, because sometimes drop shadows do look a bit cliche and a bit bad if you if you don't use them in the right scenario. So what we're going to do over here is come over to the shape tool and we're going to click the rectangular tool. We're going to create a selection around the text, like so. And we're tuning the corners by holding and dragging these little points here. So you can drag, and, um, drag these to basically curve the corners of the rectangle. We're just going to make this white for now and then we can actually see. So if you come over to the tools, you can make this white and make sure the layer is actually above so you can see it. So you can see here, I just got this um, white rectangle right now. So what we're gonna do is take this re white rectangle and we are going to basically create a blur effect to blur the background. There's a few ways we can do this. The, the first way is actually, we're gonna take this whole group here, which is the background and the image, we're going to command, uh, going to shift, select both of them, command G to group them, and command E to compass them. This way, we can control C and control to V to copy and paste, and we can drag one of the layers on top of the rectangle. If we right click and click create cutting mask, this will basically clip mask um, the top image into the rectangle. So if I now remove the bottom layer, you'll see that the top image is now within the bottom image. So what we're going to do now is basically create the blur effect. So what we can do now is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just turn this up to, you know, we can go quite high with this because we don't want it to be too subtle. So we're going to turn this all the way to, um, you know, let's say 10 pixels. I create a nice blood effect in the back, as you can see there. And the cool thing now is if I move this rectangle, it will actually blur whatever is in the background, which is really nice. So I can move this if I wanted to have it in a different place in the future. Now, once this is there, what we can what we can do is double click on the rectangle, and we can add a drop shadow now onto here. You want to reduce the opacity very much, um, just so it's not too obvious. Reduce the size, the spread, and the distance. I always keep it distance at zero because I don't really like it going off in a certain direction um, most of the time. So we're just going to adjust these as we will, um, just to how we like them. I think that looks fine. You can see the before and after, just adding a bit of that depth to it, as you can see. And yeah, that's one way you can basically create this glass morphism effect in Photoshop. The next the next tip is actually a photo of my beautiful self, as you can see here. Um, the reason why I use this photo is because my acne is quite prominent on this photo. So I'm going to be telling you guys how to basically remove spots and acne in Photoshop. Um, the first way you can do this is actually by heading over to your tool set, clicking on the spot healing brush. If you don't see this, just right click, it might be any of these tools. So you just want to be selecting um, spot healing brush or just J on your keyboard. Um, because you're using Spot Healing Brush, it kind of works the same as Content Aware, where whatever you select, it will create AI to um, fill in the gaps. So we're just be selecting these spots here, um, and you can see you might have to go back sometimes and just re-select um, them if it's not too accurate. But we'll just select these points here that we want to fill in. Get rid of these bits. There's one in my hair up here as well, just select that and we should be good to go. One on my neck, there's a bit of red in on my neck as well, um, we'll just see if we can reduce that. Um, some spots on my chin, as you can see here. And yeah, that's pretty much how simple it is. Um, I, there's one here as well, um, so just use J on the keyboard, just use this and you can basically just Erase this. You can see it's getting a bit obvious here, so you just want to make sure um, it's not too obvious. So yeah, there you go. That's one way you can do it. 
The second way you can do it is if I just undo everything I just did by command using command Z. The other way you can do this is by going to um, selecting your photo layer, clicking filter, neuro filters. This way will basically smoothen the whole skin no matter where the acne is. And if you've got the skin smoothening, turn on this effect blur and smoothness however you would like. If I just turn mine to full, you can really see the difference between before and after. It just, just smooths your whole face and is not guaranteed to get rid of your acne, just kind of make it not as obvious. But it is a faster and more official way to do it. Um, but the other way is better for getting the nitty gritty bits that you would like. So let's get straight into the next tip. This tip is actually how to change the season time of day of an image. So as you see here, I have a picture of a very nice field. The first step again is to right click the layer and click rasterize layer. We're going to head over to the top again and click filter and neural filters. We're going to then go to the landscape mixer tool and select this. You can use these presets that here that Adobe supply with but I don't really fancy them as they don't do the job as well as I want them to. So I'm going to head over to custom and you can pick a custom image if you would like to basically base the theme off. I'm just going to use these sliders down the side here. So I can basically change this image to winter. If I turn it all the way up, it will go to very peak time in winter. Um, just give it a second to process. You can see it changes all the trees, the road, the sky. It's not super detailed, um, and this isn't a detailed image to start off with, but you can kind of get the idea that it will just change the season. So if you go halfway, for example, it's not going to be as prominent and you kind of get that same vibe. The same thing for autumn, if you turn autumn up, it creates that nice orange and teal look that a lot of people like, um, and it is uh, sometimes seen as a very cinematic time of the year. Um, same thing for summer, sunset, you can you can use as many of these as you want. Sometimes if you go a bit crazy, it, it kind of looks a bit weird. But you can see me mixing all these together right now, it kind of creates this really wacky feel. Um, so don't go too overboard on it, kind of pick what you would like um, and you can basically just change the complete mood and feel of your images. If you have a subject as well, you can click preserve subject and basically it will kind of warp the colours around this subject instead of changing that subject into a tree or something using AI. Hi hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you found it easy to keep track of what was going on. I'm still getting used to doing these type of videos. So like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this and to more videography and photography content. Like and follow my Instagram for some more photography content and let me know in the comments below what other content you'd like to see from me. So yeah, see you guys next time.